A deadly pair would embark on a killing spree before travelling across Canada's wild terrain. And although Canadian Armed Forces and the RCMP would hunt for the two extensively, how they were found was a little less conventional. My name's Adrian, and welcome back to Coffeehouse Crime. Today we're looking at the case of Cam McLeod and Bryce Migelski, a devastating tale of two murderous friends on the run, and how a member of the Fox Lake Cree Nation and a raven brought their story of Rampage to an end. If you're new to this channel, I post both solved and unsolved cases here on a weekly basis, so if that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing to Coffeehouse Crime. So pull up a seat, grab a coffee and sit back. This is the case of Cam McLeod and Bryce Migelski. Oh, the tropical metropolis of Sydney, Australia. Life arguably doesn't get much better than here. You've got sandy beaches, wrapped around a beautiful city, caramelised by the golden sun. There's a lot to like about this place, and one of those lucky residents went by the name of Lucas Fowler. Lucas was born on the 30th of September 1995, and he grew up in Hornsby, Sydney. Son of the New South Wales Police Chief Inspector Stephen Fowler and his wife Shannon Fowler, Lucas grew up happy alongside his brothers Jacob and Isaac, and his sister Savannah. He attended Kurungai High School, and as he moved into adulthood, was described by family and friends as a thoughtful young man who loved adventure and had a charming smile. Being the fourth child in the Fowler family, Lucas grew up being inspired by his older siblings, and as a direct result, loved the outdoors, adventure, camping, and riding dirt bikes. He also developed a sincere passion for travel, a passion that in 2016 took him on a two-year backpacking trip around the world. This would eventually bring him to Croatia, a country in the southeast of Europe, known for its islands, natural beauty, and of course, Game of Thrones. Croatia also enjoys over 2,700 hours of sun every year, which, surprisingly, is more than Sydney. It was during his time in Croatia that the young Lucas Fowler first set his eyes upon China Dees. China was born on the 25th of January 1995 in North Carolina on the eastern seaboard of the United States. She was the daughter of Duane and Sheila Dees, and the sister to British, Stretson and Kennedy. China studied at Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina, and just like Lucas, she had a profound itch for travelling. It was this mutual interest that led them to first cross paths. Lucas knew that he liked China the moment he met her, and it wasn't long at all until she liked him back. The two fell in love, both of them finding home thousands of miles away from home, but what do you do when you fall in love with someone that lives so far away? For Lucas, it wasn't a problem. Almost straight away, he applied for a working holiday visa in Canada. The couple spent their first Christmas together back at China's place in the US. And shortly after the new year, Lucas left to work on a ranch in a remote part of British Columbia, the most western province in Canada. The work there was hard, but he loved spending time in the outdoors, where he was close to both nature and animals. At the ranch, he would often be found spending hours and hours of his downtime on the phone to China, and it wasn't long after that that she was able to join him there too. It was during this time that the two lovers hatched a plan. They had a blue van, some money saved up, and a hearty appetite for the Canadian outdoors. So after a week of deliberating, the two packed up, said goodbye to the ranch's owner, and headed on out to Liard Hot Springs. On the evening of the 13th of July 2019, CCTV at a petrol station in Fort Nelson captured Lucas and China pulling up in their minivan to refuel. They were driving a 1986 blue Chevrolet van, one that Lucas had patiently fixed up during his time at the ranch. Their feelings toward and interactions with each other seemed to be no different to the day they first fell in love. A surveillance camera captured the two sharing a long, thoughtful hug. China walked into the station while Lucas finished refuelling their vehicle, before joining her to grab some dinner. It was a relatively warm sunny evening in British Columbia. As the two returned to their van, China was seen with an ice cream in hand. And then the two drove off, ready and excited for their adventures together ahead. That would be the last time that the couple were seen on camera though, 
and just 36 hours later, the two would be found dead. On the 14th of July, the following day, Lucas and China's van had apparently broken down on the Alaska Highway, about 20 kilometers south of Leod Hot Springs. At around 3.20pm, a mechanic named Curtis Broughton, along with his wife Sandra, stopped to check in on the couple after seeing their van. The young couple seemed like they had the situation under control, however. They were having a picnic while waiting for the van to flood. Lucas assured Curtis that he knew what he was doing, and so he waved him goodbye. But at approximately 7am the next day, Lucas and China were found dead. The van was still in the exact same spot. Both Lucas and China were found face down in a ditch, lying five feet away from each other. Their bodies had visible gunshot wounds. Five spent shell casings were located nearby, and their van's back doors were open, the windows smashed. Not only were the friends and families of China and Lucas devastated, but communities across BC were too. A young, carefree couple set out to have the time of their lives were found dead in what appeared to be cold-blooded murder. But this wasn't going to be the only tragic event to happen over the next few days. No, things were going to get a lot worse. Five days pass, and the date is now the 19th of July. About 200 kilometers west of Liad Hot Springs lies Dease Lake. In the early hours of the morning, Royal Canadian Mounted Police are called, with reports of a burning truck in a pullout located on a highway near Dees Lake. While at the scene, police are told that a body had also just been found in a pullout a few kilometers south of the burning truck. The man's body had numerous injuries, a pool of blood surrounded the body from where he fell. But who the man was, or even who the truck belonged to, was anyone's guess. Throughout the day though, things would become a little clearer. Using the license plates found on the burning van, police would eventually learn that it belonged to a young man named Cam McLeod. And after speaking to Cam's girlfriend, they learned that he, along with his friend Briar Schmigelski, had been saving up for a trip north to find work. Police still didn't know who the body belonged to though, but at least they knew that it didn't fit Cam's or Briar's profiles. And with that said, the two men were reported missing. So at this point in the story, we have a very odd and concerning situation unfolding in British Columbia. We have a couple shot dead, a third person's body found 200 kilometers away, and just down the road from that, two young men are now missing, their truck found entirely ablaze. Do we have a spree killer on the loose who has now abducted two 19-year-olds? Well, no, not quite. Over the next few days, the RCMP would learn more about Cam McLeod and Bryce Schmigelski. Cam and Briar were both from Port Alberni, a port city located on Vancouver Island. Not a lot happens in Port Alberni, with a population of just 18,000 and the city's economy relying on salmon fishing and forestry. It's a relaxed place to live, with little chance to make it big. And for Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, that lack of excitement left them feeling empty and unchallenged. The two had both finished secondary school, but at the age of 19 were working in the town's local Walmart. And while they were employed, they didn't do much else. Both of them were massive gamers, playing Call of Duty on a very frequent basis. And it's through their gaming that eyebrows began to raise towards the two. Briar, who was the bigger gamer of the two, started to lose friends through the years of 2017 to 2019. He would often hail Hitler, share his extreme ideologies to friends, and started to make them feel uncomfortable after showing them pictures of him wearing a Nazi armband. He would also tell them how he imagined playing out shooter games in reality. While playing video games, he would often be found saying things like, what if this was real? Can you imagine if this was real? And was observed to get a little too excited while thinking about it. In parallel to these discoveries, detectives were working on tracing Cam's and Bry's movements, and soon, a very disturbing sequence would begin to emerge. On the morning of the 12th of July 2019, two days before Lucas and China had been killed, Cam and Briar had left their homes in Port Alberni. And later in the same day, the two were captured leaving Carbellas with an SKS carbine and cake. At 7pm on the 15th of July, later on the same day that Lucas and China were killed, surveillance cameras recorded Cam and Briar at a gas station near Whitehorse in Yukon Territory. 
The route from these two locations cut directly through the area where the young couple were found killed by gunfire. The two young men were then captured by CCTV again on the morning of July the 19th, at a gas station near Terrace, BC. They were now driving a RAV4. By the 21st of July, Cam and Briar had reached a store in the small city of Moda Lake in the Canadian province of Saskatchewan. At this stage, the two had driven over 1,300 miles across Canada, and were heading towards Hudson's Bay. By the day of the 22nd of July, it had been a week since Lucas and China had been found murdered. By now, the RCMP were in a more comfortable position to believe that Cam and Briar were not missing. In fact, they now believed that Cam and Briar were the killers. It was on this day that two things happened. The first was a phone call from Vancouver. The call was from a woman. Police had released a sketch of the man whose body had been found two kilometres south from Cam's burning truck. She called to let the RCMP know that her husband's face matched the sketch, was in the area, and he hadn't been heard of since the day before this person had been murdered. And DNA tests would later confirm that the match was indeed sadly correct. The body belonged to Leonard Dick. Leonard was a 64-year-old man. He was a botany lecturer at the University of British Columbia, and he was taking a solo camping trip through the wilderness as a means to relax in his time out of the classroom. His car matched that of the RAV4 that had been seen being driven by Cam and Briar just days earlier. The second big thing was the RCMP's announcement. Today I'm here to request public assistance in locating suspects in connection to the Northern British Columbia investigations. As a result of the information and the appeal to public that we made yesterday in connection with the Dees Lake investigation and the disappearance of Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski, we were able to confirm new information and issue a new plea. For the past few days, investigators have been focusing their efforts on locating Cam and Briar, given that their vehicle and camper had been located on fire and the two were considered missing. We have also been working to identify a man whose body was discovered deceased two kilometers south of the vehicle fire at a highway pullout. Investigators have also been able to confirm that Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski have left British Columbia. We believe that they're likely continuing to travel. Though we don't have a possible destination, we can now confirm that they were last seen driving a gray 2011 Toyota RAV4. Given these latest developments, Cam and Briar are no longer considered missing. The RCMP are now considering Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski as suspects in the Dees Lake suspicious death and the double homicide of Lucas Fowler and China Dees. We're asking for the public, if you spot Briar or Cam, consider them dangerous. Do not approach, take no action, and call immediately 911. It was during the very same day as the RCMP's announcement that a report of a vehicle on fire in the remote area of northern Manitoba was received. Two members of the Fox Lake Cree Nation, an indigenous community found in northern Manitoba, went by the names of Billy Beardy and his wife Tamara Beardy. They were out berry picking when that afternoon they could see smoke rising above the trees. The car immediately fit the description of Leonard's RAV4. And although they didn't know of the fugitives at the time, Billy and Tamara reported the burning car to the police. No sighting of Cam or Briar was made though, but it would eventually be learned two days later that it was indeed the same vehicle that the two had been driving. Cam and Briar were on the run. They'd driven over 2,000 miles from Dees Lake to Sundance, as far east as possible by car actually, all the way to the end of Rural Road 290. And when they couldn't go any further, they abandoned their vehicle, pulling it off-road before setting it alight with matchsticks. Although the RCMP and the Canadian Army knew that the two were in the area, they had no idea where exactly, and even worse, didn't know if they were among the community, even possibly picking off new victims. Over the space of the next few days, police and military presence would surge across the area of Gillam, a town located southwest of Fox Lake. The land was scoured via infrared by helicopter, 
military flight paths were scheduled across the Nelson River, and local railway lines were put into lockdown. Police dogs were deployed, boots were on the ground, drones added to the air, military vehicles patrolling the roads. But despite all this military presence, Cam and Briar were still nowhere to be found. What was also frustrating was the lack of military presence found in Fox Lake. I mean, sure, there was an apparent sighting of Cam and Briar back in Gillum, but it was nowhere near the burned-out vehicle, which was located to the east of Fox Lake and Sundance. Fear was felt through Fox Lake's residents. Why had the RCMP left them without protection? For many, this was the first time that they slept with their house doors locked at night. Searches around the burned-out vehicle carried on throughout the days and nights following this, and the search area widened over time too. But despite the persistent focus and efforts to find the men, nothing. That would be until August the 1st. It had been 11 days after Cam and Briar had ditched the RAV4, and at long last, searchers found the next clue. With the forest being so dense, it's easy to often miss objects in the bush. But upon another look, Brian's backpack was located in the woodlands only a short distance away from the car. Hundreds of unspent bullets were also found nearby. This suggested a good potential direction that Cam and Briar may have taken, and the RCMP were on the right path. Even more items were found the next day, 10 kilometers away from the vehicle along the Nelson River. And soon after, a boat was found too, in the river's swell. Search efforts were now laser-focused along the Nelson River, but, just like before, the trail of clues would lead to a dead end yet again. Patience was starting to wear thin, the Canadian Armed Forces and the RCMP were running out of ideas, and nerves were starting to fray in the communities near and far. Where are Cam McLeod and Bryce Migelski? Are they still alive? And what are they planning to do? And this is where our hero of the story comes through. Billy Beardy. Not only had he noticed the burning car on fire and reported it to the police at the very beginning, but he had also spent the last three weeks helping armed forces with their search efforts. Whether it was by providing knowledge of the local area, or transporting military personnel down the rivers and roads, Billy was there. On the 7th of August, Billy was busy searching the rivers with a number of military members with him in his boat. Armed forces were still keen on checking the riverbanks for any washed up clues, and with the water becoming so fast so far east, they relied on Billy and his experience to safely navigate the potentially dangerous waterways. It was in a split second between glances from his ship's wheel that Billy noticed a raven soaring up and away from one of the river's ravines. And while it meant nothing to the members of the Canadian Armed Forces in his boat, Billy knew differently. Being a member of the Fox Lake Cree Nation meant that Billy knew a thing or two about wildlife, and for a raven to be around meant that a food source such as a carcass was nearby. On a hunch, he convinced the military personnel to agree to manoeuvre his boat to the ravine's shore. And lo and behold, it was there that the authorities made a profound discovery. They had finally found Cam McLeod and Bryce Migelski. The two were both dead. Cam had shot Bryce in the head before turning the gun on himself. Alongside them, both their rivals were found, with a mobile phone full of videos saying their goodbyes. In their videos, Cam and Briar shared that they were responsible for the three murders. The two also said they planned to march to the Hudson Bay, where they would then attempt to hijack a boat and flee to Europe or Africa. But once they reached the river, they realised it was too big and fast moving, and so they altered their plans. Briar shared in his video that they had shaved in preparation for their deaths, but planned to go out and kill more people first. In the last video, Cam and Briar left their last will and testament, and expressed a desire to be cremated. And with all said and done, the chase for Cam and Briar had finally... come to an end. Investigations later concluded that Cam and Briar had left their hometown to find work, but when nothing was available, the two had a change of heart. It is still unknown why Cam and Briar decided to initiate a killing spree. 
in their final videos, they revealed no motive, and neither did they show any remorse for their three victims. Lucas Fowler, China Deese, and eventually, Leonard Dick. Investigators determined that Leonard had died from a gunshot wound, inflicted from Cam's SKS rifle. And to great sadness, Leonard leaves behind a wife, and many students who remember him for his quirkiness and enthusiasm. He was known as an extremely bright, interesting individual. He was down to earth, and didn't stray far from the elements of the wild. He loved the outdoors, loved his own company, and was doing what he enjoyed right to the very end. And let's not forget about Lucas and China either. Two young adults at the very beginning of their independence, their adventure, and their relationship. A couple with so much love to give, killed by a pair that had no love to spare. Lucas's father, Stephen Fowler, told journalists that despite his years as a police officer, nothing could have prepared him or his family for the weight of this tragedy. He will deeply be missed, as will China and Leonard. Since the discovery of Cam's and Briar's bodies, Kiwatin Tribal Council have honoured Billy for his vital role in the manhunt and tragedy. He put himself on the line for weeks, and in the end, it was his traditional hunting skills that concluded the story of the killers. There's a thing or two for Canadian Armed Forces to learn from Billy. No technology was needed here, but maybe something they could have provided him in the three weeks that Billy dedicated to finding the killers at large was a bulletproof vest, something they forgot to offer him for the entire time. So next time you're busy investigating a disappearance, remember that sometimes, it's the most basic of techniques that can solve a mystery. Thank you so much for watching another video today by Coffeehouse Crime. If you did find this case interesting, then please remember to give this video a like, and if you haven't yet, please subscribe to Coffeehouse Crime, it really helps me out. What do you think about the case of Cam McLeod and Bryce Migelski? Do you think that there was any particular motive involved? What do you think caused them to go on this killing spree? Please share your thoughts in the comments below, I really do enjoy reading them. Thank you once again for joining today folks, and as always, I'll be right here, behind this camera, waiting for you in the next one. Until then, they look after each other. Goodbye.